Welcome to another session of In The Labs with me, Becky. We're at Maker Central and I'm going to show you how we made this arcade machine. So we're in the Vectorit Labs and I'm going to look for some plywood material for our arcade machine. Now, the arcade machine is the brainchild of Bill Young over at ShopBot. So at our user group meeting last year, Bill brought along this awesome arcade machine. He's kindly given us the files to give to you guys. I'm going to make a few tweaks on it just to personalise it a bit for Vectric. So let's go over to the software and we'll take a look at the actual file itself. Okay, so we are using VCAF Pro here. So we're going to open up um, our files. So we've actually got two files that we're including. So we've got ShopBot, so that's Bill's original arcade file that we've included as part of the free files, along with the Vectric version, which we've made slight tweaks to, which I'll talk about shortly. So let's start by opening ShopBot's arcade file. That's going to open up into VCarve and we are working with full 4x8 sheets uh, to machine this. And the material thickness that we are working with for this file is 0.47 inches, which is pretty standard from most plywood suppliers. Okay, so as I mentioned, Bill from ShopBot has kindly provided us this file. Uh, and he's drew up all of the vectors that you can see here. We also have toolpaths and you can see that everything has been assigned to a particular layer. It's all super organized. So do take the time to have a look through uh, the different sheets. As you can see, we are currently working with three different sheets here. We have a sheet that represents the side panels and then we have a sheet that represents various other parts of the arcade game in order for it to all slot together. And then up here, we also have a marquee sign, uh, which you can input a logo on the top as part of your overall finish for the actual arcade game. It kind of makes sense now to switch over to the toolpath side of things so we can see how everything will look once it's machined. So to do that, we're just going to use this option over here to switch over to our toolpath side. And we'll first take a look at the toolpaths for the side panels. Okay, so we have here marquee groove. So let's just uh, double click or at least select that so that we can see the visibility of where that's actually going to be machining. So what this is, it's just simply a pocket uh, that enables you to create a groove to insert the marquee sign into the top portion of your arcade game. So let's take a look at ShopBot's version. So we're just going to take a look here. So here is the parts that we're talking about so you can see what they've done is they've created this um, shop bot graphic that slots into the side panel so that's exactly what we're looking at there okay so done a little small cut depth using a quarter inch tool and that's pretty much that then we've got uh, cut out sides okay so in this one this is a profile toolpath where basically we're cutting out all of the uh, all of the parts, so the two side panels, plus all of the slots. Now, these slots uh, are something that we should actually take a look at uh, and talk a little bit more about it. Now, I'm going to put a link in the description, and this is for a blog that uh, Bill had created uh, last year, all about the snap joints and how this whole process comes together. So the snap joints are essentially hooks that when they're flexed, they enable you to assemble and disassemble parts without any hardware being required. Um, so for example, here we go. So this is where they're kind of flexed in order for it to go together. So the idea is, is that we're going to cut out these holes, which you can see are actually on the sides of our arcade machine. And then the front facing panels are going to look something like this, where this portion with this long cut being in place enables us to create uh, that flex. So that flex can kind of be moved outwards to this portion of the actual slot um, where this pocket will essentially snap in place and it will kind of create that lock. 
So I do encourage you to take a look at this blog. Like I said, I will include it in the link in our description. But again, you can see, so this must have been an earlier um, iteration of the arcade game. And so you can see uh, the idea here is that we're going to have uh, the front facing panels just slotting in to each one of these side pockets. And we'll talk more about those actual front facing parts in a second. Okay, so as I said, we are using a profile toolpath uh, to do all of those cutouts. So we're cutting all the way through the material, uh, plus a very small fraction, um, just to ensure that we're actually cutting through the actual sheet. I'm machining on the outside, we've got some ramps in there as well, so that's just going to ensure that we're ramping into the material rather than uh, plunging into that. Uh, and that's going to pretty much cut that out. So we can take a look at what this looks like so we've got initially we've got our groove so preview that so that's that there then we've got the cut out sides and we can see what that looks like here and then if we delete it we should be left with um, this okay so we've got small little portions left in there they're very small so I wouldn't be too worried about those but as always you should always ensure that you check that um, everything is safe to do so on your own setup Okay, so that's pretty much the sides. So we'll go back to the 2D view now and we're going to double click over into the panels sheet. So the beauty of the sheet setup is that we're able to create and edit and see all of our sheets in one place. Um, but have the ability to switch between them, which is super nice when, especially when dealing with projects that require multiple sheets um, and for you to have that full visibility of what's going on elsewhere. Okay then, so this sheet is the panel sheet. So this is everything that's going to basically draw together the arcade game between these two side panels. Okay, so just switch that over there. Okay, so this larger panel here is going to represent the full front part of our arcade game. So if we go back to that image, we can see it there. So that's basically this portion here. I'll just move that over a moment. Okay, and then we have um, the top portion here, which is representing uh, this part here that's going to have the actual sign on the top there. So again, just to recap, so it's this, this shelf here where the marquee will sit on top there. Okay, and then we have a back panel. Okay, so you can see here on the back, we can't actually see the back side, but we can see the location there. So that's to hide the back side. Um, and then we have the actual control panel on the front here. And Bill has kindly provided two versions of this. So you've got one kind of yeah classic arcade layout. And then we also have this other version that has your joystick in the center um, with buttons around the outside. Okay, now all of these um, vectors that represent the buttons and so on are um, pretty much sized generally to how these buttons are sized, but I do recommend that you double check all of the um, diameters or the sizes of any vectors that we've got here to ensure that it accommodates your own setup as well. Okay, so we have quite a few more toolpaths to discuss in this one. Okay, so first off, we've got fluting for the snap. So if we just zoom in, you can see it's all of these okay so we've got a series of lines okay and that's going to enable us to create uh, the flute to ensure that we create a variation in order for us to be able to slot that into the actual snap joint so let's just go into that so this is the fluting toolpath so basically it enables you to create a cut that flutes um, over a complete length or at the start or at the end. Uh, typically you find these on like a uh, fire place surrounds or drainage boards, that sort of thing. And so the idea here that Bill has used is to create a series of lines where in VCarve we're now able to kind of machine um, 
an angle kind of cut um, using all of those lines to create that flute effect and with the variation in the depth that's going to enable us to easily kind of uh, pull that out in order for it to kind of slot into its um, into its actual slot that it needs to go into. So let's just bring up uh, Bill's blog again, okay? So if we have a look, so just get a close up, okay? So this is your flute, okay? So starting here and machining down um, to a particular depth, which in this case, uh, we can have a look at the actual toolpath there. So cutting down at 0.35 there, so we still have a little bit of a flat uh, bottom um, and that's there what the flute will look like. Okay, so that's that in there and we're using a quarter inch tool to actually cut that out. So if we go ahead and preview that, you can see what that looks like. Okay, so there's all of your flutes. Okay then, so next up we've got dowel holes. Okay, so if we just go into our 2D view, okay, so you'll see that we've got lots of uh, dowel holes here. Okay, so dowel holes have been included here to um, just to give some cross grain strength uh, and it could just kind of reinforces that hook okay so just cutting all the way through and again you want to make sure that the dowels uh, the dowel vectors match the dowels that you are actually going to be inserting if you choose to do that okay and then if we go ahead and preview that we can take a look you can see what that looks like there okay so let's just uh, tile our windows well, actually, we'll just go straight into the 2D view. We'll take a look closer at the actual vectors here. Okay, so then we've got uh, snap pockets, um, and we can see that's highlighted all of these here. So, again, let's just bring up that uh, image for you. Uh, so, we'll bring that up. Okay, so just as a reminder, here's your dowels, and this is the snap pocket uh, that we're going to be looking at now so it's just a simple pocket pass uh, that cuts 0.2 uh, inches deep using that quarter inch tool and it's this that's going to enable the snapping operation for it to kind of lock itself in place into its matching uh, hole okay so that's pretty much that so again let's just preview that and we'll see what that looks like so there's all of your uh, snap pockets okay so next up let's go back to the 2d view okay so we've got monitor and marquee pockets okay so we've got the monitor and we've got the marquee pocket now you want to make sure that um, you measure up the monitor that you're going to use to uh, ensure that it fits so do check that over and also if you are going to use a different material for your marquee again you want to make sure that this slot matches um, the thickness of the material that you intend to use for your marquee top okay so in here we've just got a simple pocket toolpath cutting quarter of an inch uh, and that's going to do that once you i do recommend that once you have cut your pocket out here that you do check that your uh, monitor actually fits in place there and obviously make the adjustments uh, make that bigger or hopefully you've measured your monitor to size um, that you would only need to go bigger um, so do just check that over okay so we'll close out there and it's also worth noting that as well with this pocket it also helps kind of like sit your monitor in place but obviously there will be reinforcements on the back end side of it to ensure that your monitor doesn't come out uh, but it's just a good guide to see how well that kind of fits in place right then so then if we just uh, double check that preview okay so we'll preview that so that's what that would look like okay next up we have the uh, joystick recess okay so this is for the uh, metal plate portion that generally comes with joysticks so that's just to slot that in place so just cutting down a very small amount so we're actually cutting the underside of the control uh, kiosk here um, and again you want to just double check your plates to the actual drawer in here and make the adjustments whether that's bigger or smaller um, before you go ahead and cut that so make sure you measure everything 
measure twice, cut once. Okay, so that's that one. So again, let's just preview that. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Got a, a trim washer for the recess. So again, that is uh, this just washer area here. So just cutting down a very small amount there. And if we go ahead and preview that, you can see it's just those washers there. Okay, next up we have VBit angle for control shelf. Okay, so let's have a look in our file. So we're looking at the control panels. Okay, so remember we've got two, so obviously cut whichever one you want to use. Or if you're feeling adventurous and you want to cut both to try them both out, then go ahead for both of them. Okay, so basically we're creating an angled cut here and this is going to enable us to create a nice angled um, tilt for the actual a control panel generally as arcade machines go that's how they're pretty much designed so this is what we're talking about so it's this angle so not only do we have the lock-in mechanism over here but it's how it sits nicely against this back portion over there as well okay so in there we're cutting down 0.4 of an inch using a 90 degree one and a quarter inch v-bit machining on those lines okay and that's going to give us something that looks like this okay Next up, we have a toolpath called Optional Speaker Holes Cutout. Now, now, depending on your setup, your monitor might have inbuilt speakers, uh, which you might not need to cut these out. Um, but if you if you are wiring up external speakers and you want to kind of create a bit more of a design shout out about that, then you could always look at creating these holes and create some kind of platform uh, behind your arcade machine to insert those speakers so they're in line with the actual speaker holes okay and that's pretty much all this is for so this is just a simple cutout um, that's just going to cut those holes out like so okay so remove those and that's what that would look like um, we've got the monitor cutout, so again it's just a cutout that's going to cut the uh, monitor, so if we go and preview that, we just select that and then go ahead and preview that, we'll go into the 3D view, it'll help us there, and then we'll just delete that, and again it's probably worth double checking that you check that everything fits in nicely here, uh, and that you can actually see your monitor or at least get a good feel for that because obviously we're cutting this on the back side. Okay, so again, it's all about just double checking the size of your parts and then cutting them and ensuring that, that those measurements translate into the actual design here. Everything is easily um, editable by going into you know your, your set size tool and um, changing the values there. Finally, we have a cutout toolpath. So again, we're just cutting out all of those parts. Um, so we're cutting all the way through, very similar to what we used on the other sheet. And so if we go ahead and preview that, you can see what that looks like. Now, I must remind you, there's no tabs on this. So if you wanted to add tabs, then please add your tabs there. And that is pretty much it for Bill's design. Now, I've made a few tweaks to Bill's um, original amazing layout um, to better suit our version. Now we made this arcade machine specifically for the Maker Central event. Um, now where it was going to be positioned on the booth would mean that people would be walking all the way around it. So we wanted to close off the back. So rather than having a uh, smaller back panel here, basically we created another full sheet back panel and just tweaked the actual side panels. So let's go in and we'll take a look at uh, the Vetric version of that. Okay then, so let's go and open an existing file. So we're going to go into the Vectric Arcade file. So here you can see, again, we've got a similar kind of sheet layout. There are a few more extra sheets, which I'll kind of quickly talk through. So starting off, we've got a front panel. So this is pretty much the same as what Bill has done, except I've obviously tweaked the, I've actually tweaked the overall width of this 
so it's wider to accommodate the monitor that I was using. So I actually made that wider and therefore the actual uh, recess and for the monitor is different to Bill's version. Um, I've also removed the speaker holes as we were using a monitor that had the speakers built in. So I didn't need that. So I didn't include that here. Um, I also removed the dowel holes as well from each one of these hooks and that's with the idea that I would only ever assemble it once and it will just be left as it is and so I didn't really need to worry about the extra uh, strength and reinforcement that it's going to give that hook so I just kind of took that out. However, I think if you're going to do this, I would probably totally re recommend that you use uh, Bill's version. Um, especially if you are going to be assembling and disassembling uh, on a regular basis. Okay, so that's pretty much um, the front panel there. So uh, that's that. So moving over to the back panel. Now, as, as, as I mentioned, um, because we needed to totally close off the back panel, I actually had to make an adjustment to the side panel. So you can see I've got extra uh, slots on the top area here, um, and that matches the actual uh, back panel as well. And the idea of the back panel is that I was going to machine this in a two-sided operation. So, And that's purely because I wanted detail to go on the back where I could do some inlays just to give it a little bit more of a gamer feel to the overall part. Okay, so on this side, again, so we've got the flutes, we've got the snap pockets in place, also got the areas for um, the joystick control. Uh, so that's all pretty much the same. Also have these added dowel holes and this is purely for me to align everything when I come to flip that material over. And so when we go ahead and just preview all of these toolpaths so you can see that. So uh, preview all visible toolpaths. Okay, so that's what the top side looks like. Okay, and then switching to the bottom side. So once I flipped that material over, located my dowel holes. Okay, so I made sure that I drilled all the way through the material and into the spool board. So it's just a case of me just flipping the whole sheet over and then that way everything would be super aligned. Now, if you've not done two-sided machining before, I totally recommend that you check out our two-sided machining tutorials that cover uh, various methods of flipping your material. Okay, so then on to the other side. So you can see here I've included this game on. So this is these are going to be pockets where I'm going to inlay some acrylic into uh, the actual plywood. I've also got a door, uh, like a, an area here that's just going to be a cutout where we're going to have a door, which is going to look like this. And again, that V is going to be... Um, inlaid with acrylic into that and that's just going to enable us to be able to open the back panel to access the monitor so at the end of the day we can turn the monitor off and or if there's anything we need to do we can access the uh, all of the equipment from inside there using that door space okay so here we've just got a simple pocket for um, the actual text and the arrows that we've included here so if we just go ahead and preview that so if we just tile our windows that's what that looks like okay we've got the um we've also got a pocket for our panel access okay so the idea was was that we're cutting a pocket here where i'm going to inlay some clear acrylic and we're going to have a graphic that we're going to design uh that's going to be reflective of the actual game uh that we're going to actually have on uh, the monitor and that people can play which is going to be all related to uh victor and so that's why we've created this pocket here. Um, so that's pretty much just a standard pocket that you can see there, we're just cutting down um, not too much. I think it's three mil. So that's uh, pretty much like 0.118 inches in there. Uh, and that will enable us to insert our acrylic in there. We've got a profile cut out for all of the parts, all of the joystick. Um, sorry, not the joystick, the 
buttons that we're including. We've got to profile for our joystick. So that's based on the movement that I found within the actual, the, the way that you move the joystick. I had to cut that a little bit bigger to accommodate for the movement uh, that I was getting from that stick. Uh, and then obviously we've got the uh, door surround as well. So if we just take a look at that, it's just a standard uh, cut out there whereby on a different sheet I actually cut out the top portion of that. So let's just close out of there and we'll just get our parts looking okay. So we're just going to switch back to the other side now. So that's all, all of the kind of the front part the back panel, the control panel and the back door surround and then over onto this sheet we've got our side panels and our top so again I'm just going to preview all of these toolpaths so we'll just preview all toolpaths so you can see what that looks like so we've created a marquee out the same material uh, that we're actually cutting this so you'll notice that my slots to slot this into is actually thicker than uh, the shop bot file that we're also giving away as they used a much thinner material. Um, and again, you can see how all of this comes together. And then this whole panel will just glue on top of the door surround um, that we've created for that door. So that's pretty much it. And in my version, you can see I've included tabs as well. Uh, so that's that. And then obviously with all of the inlay portions, so the Vectric text, got the strap that goes around the Vectric logo, we've also got the game on. I basically copied all of those vectors over to their appropriate sheets and nested them as we kind of ex we cut the uh, acrylic pieces um, externally just on the laser machine just to get that done um, whilst all of this is being machined at the same time so that's why they're all just over there but it, should you want to make uh, this exact surround everything's laid out for you here right then so I think it's about time now we head over to the labs uh, and take a look at how this was all put together okay so we've got our toolpaths loaded so we'll get the material onto the machine and then we'll get cutting <music> Okay, so we've got the V-bit loaded into the machine. I'm just going to load the toolpaths onto our USB. So the first toolpath we're going to cut is the strap line that we're going to V-carve. Following that, we're going to switch to the end mills then. Uh, but we'll come back to that shortly. just finished cutting so at this stage it's wise to take your parts that you're going to put into the inlay and check that they fit okay this gives you the opportunity then to um, make more wiggle room in your pocket if it's too tight so we're going to check that now okay so you can see we've got a real nice fit there so I've actually made this one quite loose but you can see that it's just sitting nice and snug in there so that's your negative 0 0.2 um, allowance in there so I'm happy with that if it was too tight at this stage what I'll do is I'll just increase that allowance uh, in the actual pocket toolpath for that and then again just test the fit until it you had a nice snug fit that you're happy with uh, I'm happy with this so we're going to move on now and we're going to do um, some of those pockets uh, for the snap joints and uh, another inlay at the bottom for the back of the door. So we're going to change tool to a quarter inch down cut a bit as we're only like touching the surface uh, with that one. After that we're going to switch over to a compression bit to cut everything out. The reason I'm using a compression bit is we're going to get a nice uh, cut both on the top and the bottom sides of the plywood where we have the interaction of the top end of the tool being a down cut, bottom end being up cut. So it's going to pull those fibers that way so we don't have any 
phrase in our material. Okay, so we're done with the first sheet. So we're gonna get this off. We're gonna load a new sheet on. We've got two more sheets to cut. Pretty much the same process as what we've done here. So the snap joints, the pockets, the profile cutouts, all of those things. Um, once we put the new sheet on, we'll get the toolpaths loaded and whilst they're uh, running, what I'll do is I'll detab all of these parts, clean them, up, clean them up so that they're all ready for assembly when we come to take the next sheets off. Okay, so we're on to the final sheet now. So this is where we're going to be cutting the back panel along with the control panel as well. So as I mentioned in the software, we are doing this uh, two-sided. So the front side is gonna have all of our flutes and our pockets with that down cutter. We're then gonna uh, put some dowels in. So we've got alignment holes so we know where those locations are. So when we flip the material over, once we flip that over and line them back with those dowels, we'll screw the material in and then we'll run the toolpaths for the other side, which we have quite a lot of toolpaths there. So we're going to be cutting uh, like the inlays and uh, all of the profile cutouts as well. So we'll crack on with that and then we'll see you on the other side. machining the top side of the back panel so we've got our ramped flutes we've got our snap pockets we've also got some dowels in there as well which is going to help us to align our material when we come to flip that over so the way I've done this is we've cut all the way through we've got two holes this side two holes that side my dowels fit nicely in place into each of those dowel holes so what we're going to do is we're going to unscrew the material we're going to flip it over this way so when you are using this method for flipping where you're just doing it in a symmetrical fashion you want to really remember which way you're flipping whether that is kind of this way or whether it's that way so we're going this way uh, once we've done that we're going to line it back up with those dowels we're going to screw it back in and then we're going to machine the tool pass for the other side of the material <music> now cut on the machine uh, so next stage is, is we're going to take the sheet off we're going to sand up all of the panels just make sure they're all nice and tidy uh, in which case we'll then start thinking about assembling all of the parts making sure everything goes together okay
So I think this will hold in the, the monitor in Rebecca. So we got this little piece of uh, chipboard with some uh, MDF on it that'll just kind of pinch that into place and we can use this to pinch the top in. We just need some shorter screws, but I think that'll, that'll do the trick. So whilst we've got this in hand, we we'll just have a little moment to talk about how it all joins together. So the way that Bill actually designed this file is really, uh, really unique and awesome in that we create these snap joints. So the idea of having the flute here just enables us to be able to move that into the actual slot hole. And then with these cutouts here, it enables us to have that flex. And it's that flex that's going to enable us to lock each three parts of this panel into the actual holes uh, and then everything will just be locked in place thanks to this pocket here as well. So once you have got it locked in place it is a little bit tricksy to take out so uh, you might need a, another pair of hands to help you put it all together. this video if you did give us a thumbs up and if you've not yet subscribed to our channel hit that subscribe button for instant updates on the latest videos that we'll be releasing I'm gonna head back to the show now peace out